Kimberly Amber says, let's rock. So let's rock. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to uh, this four o'clock session on Marine Corps leadership. I don't know about you, but I'm certainly excited about that one. Never having had the opportunity to serve my country in that particular manner, I'm certainly excited to see how people lead from that different perspective. So it is my opportunity to introduce our presenter this afternoon, our educator for the afternoon, uh, Frank Gustafson, uh, who has invested the past 32 years of his life into being an entrepreneur, as well as in executive leadership. Frank's leadership skills were honed while in the United States being Marine Corps, and he served in the Marine Reserve in the 1980s. Frank is also a John Maxwell certified coach, trainer, and speaker, and he and his lovely wife, Teresa, live in Melissa, Texas. They have three amazing adult children, and they are expecting their first grandchild in June. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Frank Gustafson. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I sure do appreciate the opportunity to be here today to address this uh, auspicious group of individuals. I am, I myself am a Toastmaster, believe it or not. I am doing speech number eight in my CC manual on Tuesday. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Who's doing the speech today? Who's evaluating? Uh, <laughs> I guess you can all evaluate if you want to. I, you've all got evaluation seats there. If you like it, Frank Gustafson. If not, just stick any old name in there. Doesn't matter. <laughs> This will apply to so don't pass I'll, I'll, I'll take. Friends don't let friends give non manual I love that. I love that. I love that. Well, you guys know, as Toastmasters and as leaders in Toastmasters, you know that over the last year or so, we have been celebrating the what? The 90th anniversary of Toastmasters. Did you know, though, that, that 20 years prior to that very first official Toastmasters meeting in 1924, Dr. Ralph Smedley had been, had been trying to get speaking groups up and running for 20 years. And one of the things that he found was that in his early days at the YMCA, he would start these groups up, he would get a lot of enthusiasm, and then when he would take a new post or when he would move somewhere, he moved from Bloomington, Illinois to California, these groups would just fade. And the thing that he found was if leadership wasn't present, then if you didn't have people that believed in and bought into the dream, then the organization would just fade away. Now he was a visionary and he kept trying to work on this thing and in 1924 he finally cracked the code and Toastmasters is what it is today. Today, Toastmasters International is the largest speaking and leadership organization on the planet, 313,000 people. Imagine that, 313, where are they all? Go out and haul get them, 313,000 of them. We can muster more than this, right? Uh, 14, almost 15,000 clubs in 126 countries. I am proud to stand before you and call myself a Toastmaster, and I'm proud to stand before you and call myself a United States Marine. Any, I know that there's one veteran in here. Any other veterans in the room? What branch did you serve in, sir? Marine Corps. Semper Fi. You know, there's actually only two branches in the military. <laughs> the Air Force is, is a corporation and the Marine Corps is a cult. So that leaves you with the Army and the Navy. Yeah. Well, Semper Fi, sir, I know that, that we've got a, a gunny up here. How about you, sir? What's that? How, when, did you, oh, no, sorry. When, when did you serve? Uh, too, a long time ago. A long time ago. <laughs> well, I know we got 1953 to 1967, right, gunny? Okay. Well, I was, I was three years old when you got out of the Marine Corps. I served from 83 to 90. I want to talk about Marine Corps leadership. What is the first thing without you two, well, you, you two guys can, can answer in too, but what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Marine Corps and leadership? Orders. Orders. Drill sergeant. Drill sergeant. Drill instructor. Drill instructor. Thank you, Gunny. Yes. Okay. What about some of these things? You know, a lot of people think about a, 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 a six foot something, zero percent body fat, chiseled Greek god standing with his knife hand in the face of a young 18, 19 year old private just screaming and yelling. 
That's what they think about. There was a movie in, for, for, for some of us, maybe more seasoned folks in here, there was a movie in 1957 with Jack Webb called the DI, DI stands for Drill Instructor. It was a great movie. More contemporary is Full Metal Jacket with Arlie Ermey. And Arlie Ermey has probably done more to bring notoriety to the Marine Corps than just about anyone else out there in, in recent history. Now, a lot of that is, some of it's true, a lot of it is Hollywood. I'll guarantee you that. But the fact remains that the Marine Corps, this year, this, this November, will celebrate 240 years of leadership success on the battlefield and in the boardroom. It's proven. You can go out and do a Google search on leaders that came out of the Marine Corps. It's an amazing group of individuals. I wanna play a quick video here that might take you from orders and drill sergeants and drill instructors and some of those things that I, because I wanna take, I wanna transition your, your thinking about Marine Corps leadership into what might surprise you a little bit. So this is about a one minute clip. The light that fuels the Marine Corps and the leader Work you're here to help assist that You mentor people better. You have to appreciate the Marine, you have to mentor the Marine, you have to groom the Marine. But in order for you to be a leader, you have to be an example. You have to live the life that you want the Marines. Good leadership is how you respond to something bad happening at that lowest level. Low. And if they do make a mistake, they're going to learn from their mistakes and they're going to take responsibility for it. Every Marine is different, every Marine leader is different. Down at the basic level, we can't, while we all wear the same uniform, we all have the same goals, we all have the same uh, love of our core, we have go about it differently. And leadership is a very individual thing. It's important to be good at your job, and it's important to have leaders that show a good example for that, for the, for the, for the Marines that they're in charge of. But we want more than that. We want leaders to show true concern uh, for the Marines that they have. Um, in their needs. Marines will die for each other. Uh, Marines will go to battle no matter what because if we're not morally, you know, ethically, emotionally, legally sound, then we really can't be a total warrior. You're a Marine and that's it. Um, not only will I think it have tangible results in the battlefield and combat situation, but it will have tangible results throughout the span of a Marine's career I can tailor it to the needs and the, uh, uh, the different uh, requirements of the individuals in the unit or uh, the talents or tort calls of the guys. The onus is on each individual unit. I think we just need to leave the Marine Corps a better place than we found it. Hoorah. So as you listen to that, what are some of the things that you hear? Did you hear? orders and screaming and yelling and getting in people's face, you heard words like lifeblood, support the Marine, help the Marine, assist, mentor, appreciate, groom the Marine, learn from your mistakes, take responsibility. Leadership is an individual thing. Every leader is different. Every individual leader is different. Be the example, concern for the Marine, morally, ethically and emotionally sound. Show a good example, tangible to results, tailored to the individual needs of the Marine, understand the talents, the individual talents, and the individual shortfalls of the Marine. Marine Corps leadership is not all about screaming and yelling. It is a tried and true leadership development program that has been working for almost 240 years, and it is an amazing, amazing um, system. Now. I'm gonna cut kind of a wide swath. And I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start kind of wide and I'm gonna narrow that down as I talk through some Marine Corps leadership traits or characteristics. And then I'm gonna talk about some Marine Corps leadership principles. And then I'm gonna bring that down finally as to why and, and, and tie it in as to why Toastmasters leadership system is so important. So let's talk initially about the Marine Corps ethos. Ethos is a Greek word meaning character. It's used to describe guiding beliefs or an ideology. 
So let's start there. There's five areas that I want to dig into with regard to Marine Corps ethos. Esprit de corps. By the way, I'm going to give you at the end of this, so if you're, if you're copious note takers or if you want to take pictures of all the slides, that's great, you can. I'm going to give you the opportunity to get all of these slides. And in fact, the slides that I'm going to give you have got more narrative than what these slides have on them. They're going to have more of what I say. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get you those here at the end. But the Marine Corps ethos, the, the Marine Corps ethos, I'm going to really talk about five areas. Esprit de corps, which is the spirit of the Marine Corps, our motto, which is Semper Fidelis, our core values. I'm gonna talk about the, the concept that every Marine is a rifleman. I'm gonna talk about selflessness and or servant leadership. And let's start by talking about the esprit de corps. There is, there's a feeling in the Marine Corps that, that, that uh, is a feeling of pride, it's a fellowship, a common loyalty. Once a Marine, always a Marine. You can serve in the army and you're a soldier. And I'm not taking anything away from these other branches, okay? But I'm a Marine, okay? Marines are, 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 are we're a little, we're, we're a different breed. You could serve in the Navy and you're a sailor. You could serve in the Air Force and you're an airman. You, you serve in the Marine Corps, you're a Marine. It's different. There's a loyalty that's shared among us. Marines are a proud bunch. If you've, if you've ever been married to a Marine, or if you've ever had a son that's a Marine, or a father that's a Marine, or a, a, a neighbor even, you know what I'm talking about. Marines are a proud bunch. There are no former Marines, only, there, 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 there's only Marines. It's a, it's, a, it's a feeling, it's a state of mind. Marines will sacrifice themselves. One of the, the master sergeants in that video said that Marines will die for each other. There's story after story after story. The, one of the latest ones was Dakota Meyer. Does anybody know who Dakota Meyer is? Congressional Medal of Honor winner, young 20-year-old kid who went back, came out of harm's way and then went back in n numerous times to pull out his brothers, uh, both dead and wounded and alive. That's sacrifice. That's a 20-year-old kid. Remember what you were doing at 20 years old? Ah, oh, that's, that is a brotherhood. I want to read you a quote from one of the, the Marine Corps commandants, General Krulak. General Krulak says that among Marines there is a fierce loyalty to the Corps that persists long after the uniform is in mothballs. Is that true, gentlemen? It's a fierce loyalty to the Corps. Amen. It is, it, it's woven through the sense of belonging like a steel thread. It's an elitist spirit. Marines are convinced that they're few, they're few in number. The Marine Corps is the smallest branch of the service, and, we're, and we're, we're convinced that we're selective, we're better, and we're just a little different, okay? Now let's talk about the, the motto of the Marine Corps, Semper Fidelis. Semper Fidelis means always faithful. And it's not a blind faith, it's a faith to our nation, it's a faith to our Marine Corps, and it's a faith to our fellow Marines. Semper Fidelis is our motto. It's part of the Marine Corps ethos. And then there's our values, honor, courage, and commitment. Honor is the bedrock of our character. It's the standard for our behavior. It's the ethics, it's the morals, it's the integrity, it's the respect for human dignity. And then courage. Courage is the heart of our core values. It is the mental, moral, and physical courage. It's leading by example. It's the, the, the courage is what Dakota Meyer had when he went back in for his brothers. It's an inner strength to go the extra step. And then next is commitment. Commitment is our spirit of determination. It's a, it's a, it's a spirit of determination to professionalism, both as a warrior and as a citizen. Every Marine is the same. My two brothers in here and I are the same. We've been trained the same way. From the, it, the there's, a, there's a, a, a concept of the Marine Corps that says every Marine is a rifleman. From the, from the PFC, from the private that just got out of boot camp yesterday, all the way up to General Dunford, who, who was the Commandant of the Marine Corps until until Thursday, Friday, he became the chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff. But between the lowest and the highest Marine and every single Marine in between, we're all basic infantrymen. We're all riflemen. We're all trained as 0311s. 
and we have to qualify on that rifle every year. It's what makes us all the same. Whether you're a general or a private, we're all the same. Our primary job in the Marine Corps is as an infantryman. And then there's selflessness. It's a, it's a, it's a subordination of self to country, to corps, and to your fellow Marines. Marines take an oath to protect and defend our country, and it's a sacred pact. It's a higher calling. The wants and the desires of the individual are always subservient to the needs of our nation. And every Marine does everything he can. He strives to bring honor to the Marine Corps in everything that he does. It's a subservience to the Marine Corps. And then finally, uh, 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 a subservience, not a subservience, a, uh, 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 a selflessness to our fellow Marines. John 15, 13 says, and I read, it says, greater, greater love has no man than he lay down his life for his friends. That describes Marines perfectly. As I build on these core values, I will take you through the, the kind of the, the, the result of the Marine Corps ethos, and that is the leadership system. And we're going to talk about 14 leadership traits, which is the legacy of this ethos. And we're going to, as we go through that, then we're going to bring it into 11 Marine Corps leaderships. And I'm going to, I'm going to kind of uh, blow through these real quick. And, and, and I want you to listen for some things that you might have heard Karen say at lunch today. I'm like, has she been reading my notes? She did my whole speech in about eight minutes. It was, it's, it's crazy. You're going to see and hear some of the same things that she talked about. Now, these, these traits are talked to and ingrained in the fiber and the soul of every single Marine, whether they went to boot camp in San Diego or they went to boot camp in Paris Island or they went to officer candidate school or platoon leader uh, course in Quantico, Virginia. It doesn't matter. We all learn the same, the, these same traits. And there's 14 of them. Now, these traits, any, do we have any engineers in the room? Any engineers? All right. You engineers are going to have to cut me some slack because there's a, there's a 14 letter acronym that we use to learn these traits, and it's called JJ Did Tie Buckle. JJ D I D T I E B U C K L E, right? Now, engineers, I'm going to take that second I and I'm going to move it to the end. So it's kind of like JJ Did Tie Buckle, okay? I'm going to move it to the end, and when I get there, I'm going to explain to you why. But the first is justice. The first day is justice. Leaders who display justice gain trust and respect through fairness and impartiality. Have you ever been around a leader or worked for a leader that wasn't just and wasn't fair? We heard some of that today at lunch. We, we talked about some of that stuff. Next is judgment. Leaders display judgment by making sound decisions. In the United States Marine Corps, we are called upon to make a decision with about 60 or 70 percent of the information. If you wait until you've got all the information, almost always it's going to be too late. A decision made today in a, in a time of crisis is better than a perfect decision made next week. Decisiveness is key as leaders. We as leaders have to be decisive with our team and our club as leaders in Toastmaster. Next is dependability. Leaders can be counted on, dependable leaders can be counted on to carry out assignments. Now as leaders, sometimes we give ourselves assignments and, and we build trust with our team by carrying out those assignments that, that, we, that we give ourselves or that we take on. Next is initiative. Leaders show initiative by adapting to situation changes. I think that, uh, I forget who it was, but he was in the frontier, uh, frontier uh, that said something about taking initiative and making hard decisions at lunch. Do you guys remember that? Yeah. That, is, that is critical. Showing initiative as a leader is an adapt, an, an adapting to situational changes. The only thing that is going to be constant in this life is change, right? We all know that. Change is inevitable. Next is decisiveness. Decisive leaders give orders clearly, forcefully, and promptly. It's important that as a leader that you're decisive. And then we have tact. Tactful leaders treat everyone with respect, courtesy, and they handle difficult situations with decorum. Who can stand to be around somebody that doesn't have tact, that just, just flies off and just whatever is off the top of their head just comes out? I used, I used to work for a guy like that. It was, uh, it was crazy. 
in, in, in our Toastmasters group, we have got to handle things with tact. With brand new people that come in, there's, they don't know anything. They're, they're fresh off the boat. Tact is so critical and so important for a leader. And then there's enthusiasm. I love enthusiasm. I tend to get a little enthusiastic. And I believe that enthusiasm is a responsibility of a leader. And it's not only, or it's, it's, it, it's not only a responsibility to be enthusiastic, but it's, but it's important to be exuberant as a leader because enthusiasm breeds enthusiasm. And people want to be around enthusiastic people. They want to be around an organization, organization that's enthusiastic. Bearing. You don't hear a lot about the word bearing in the civilian world, but you see it all the time and you know it when you see it because leaders with bearing look and act like leaders. You walk into a situation, you walk into a room full of people and you can kind of pick out the leaders, right? You can kind of see who's a leader. That's because they're leading with bearing. They have bearing. Unselfishness. We talked a little bit about unselfishness, but leaders must care for their team first. You've got to put your team first. It's, it's, part of, it's part of leadership. If, it, if you don't put your team first, if you put your needs before your team, you destroy your credibility with your team. Courage. We talked a little bit about courage. Courageous leaders do what's right. I think that uh, this, the same gentleman that was talking about initiative also talked about the courage to do things right. He was, oh, I know what he was talking about. He was talking about closing down two clubs. He said he, you had to have the courage to do the right thing, even in the face of criticism. And then knowledge. Leaders are technically and tactically proficient. I know Karen talked about knowledge and talked about being proficient in what it is that you do. Not only, to, not only technically knowledge in your, uh, in your individual area, but tactically knowledge. You have, to, you, you, you have to be tactically knowledgeable. You have to know where you're taking your team or they're not gonna follow you. If you're not tactically, and you don't understand the, the plan and the goal and the, and the end result, and you, if, and, and you don't know that, and you look back, and your team's not following you, guess what? You're not leading, you're just out taking a walk. <laughs> loyal leaders guide, loyal leaders guide by Marine Corps values. You have to know what your values are as a leader, and you have to lead by those values. You have to have the courage to do that. Endurance. Sometimes as a leader, you just have to play hurt. There's gonna be times when you've gotta to come to a meeting, you've gotta do a speech, you've got to do something with the sniffles. Sorry, as a leader, that's just what we gotta do, right? That's called endurance. And then here's that last I, you engineers, that I took from the front and moved towards the back. In its integrity, and I believe that integrity, the reason I put it back there is because I believe that it's probably the most important of all 14 of these leadership traits. It is a foundation. If you walked into this building today from the parking lot and you looked and you saw huge chunks of granite or concrete or whatever that had, that had obviously fallen off of the building, you're, and, and you walked inside and you see cracks in the walls, you know something. Right? What do you know? You know that this building has got some foundation issues. The foundation lacks integrity. Well, these 14 traits need a foundation, a solid footing of integrity. And as leaders, we have got to be truthful. We've got to be honest because it will always, always come out if we're not. Integrity is so incredibly important in leadership. Now, let's talk about 11 leadership principles. Now, these 11 leadership principles are, are taught primarily to officers. And what they do is they create the atmosphere that young Marines are raised in. You're gonna see some, some uh, redundancy, and I'm gonna pop through those things, but understand that you've got characteristics and traits versus principles. So they, they, while they, there are some nuances, but some of them are, are fairly close. We talked about the first one, be tactically and technically proficient. Know yourself and seek self-improvement. As leaders, you've got to start by understanding who you are. You have to know who you are, know what your limitations are, know your strengths, know your weaknesses. Operate in your strengths and shore up your weaknesses with processes, with people that you bring along beside you. 
but you have to know yourself and constantly, as a leader, seek to raise your bar. Karen talked about that as well today. Always be raising your bar. Always be uh, 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 creating an environment that people can grow into. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this with, with some John Maxwell stuff here, the law of the lid, if you've ever read 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. So, so I'm going to hit that one then. But the next is know and look out for the welfare of your Marines, of your team. One of the things that Shari Abi, the president of 2 Change U, I, I'm a member of 2 Change U, Shari is our president. One of the things that she does that really impresses me and I think is an, is an outstanding thing for a leader to do is that when any new people come into our club, she always meets them and she always tries to find out something about them. And she introduces them to the rest of the team before the meeting. And that, I think that that's really important because it, it's, it's almost kind of looking out for the welfare of the brand new people and helping them feel at home and helping them br bring them in and making them part of the family right away. Number four is keep your Marines informed. Communication is so important as a leader. Again, you have to, you have to know where you're going and you have to communicate where you're going. I can tell you as, a toast, as, as somebody who's been at Toastmasters for only 10 months, the other night when, when we were watching, the last night we were watching the contest, the lady that was, I was sitting next to a, a, a distinguished Toastmaster and I was asking her a lot of questions because there's a lot of things that I don't know. I'm gonna learn a ton in this next year. But, but you have to communicate with the newest people so they understand the vision, they understand the mission, the values, where it is that this club is going, why they are here, why they're sticking around. And then next is set the example. As a leader, you have to set the example. Don't ever ask anyone to do something that you would never do yourself. Number six is ensure the task is understood, supervised, and accomplished. One of the things that, that Shari does at, at Two Change U is when we have a brand new person, she assigns a mentor. And maybe all, I haven't visited any other clubs, maybe all clubs do that. But she assigns a mentor to the new people. And that mentor helps that brand new person as their awe counter the first time, or vote counter, or timekeeper. They sit with them, they explain the process, they explain what they're doing, they explain why they're doing it. They explain, well, yeah, but I don't really, I don't want to click when somebody says, that's just rude. No, there's a reason for that. And it's part of, it's part of making sure that the task is understood, supervised, and accomplished, because you want to have a successful meeting. That's what keeps keep people coming back. That creates an environment of success. And then train your Marines as a team, this creates the esprit de corps. This creates the, the camaraderie in your club. Make sound and timely decisions. We talked about decision pro process earlier. Number nine is develop a sense of responsibility in your subordinates. The way that you develop a sense of responsibility in people is you give them responsibility. And I know somebody earlier at lunch talked about this today too. You have to give people responsibility. You have to give them tasks and allow them to fail. John Maxwell has written two books about this. One of them is called Failing Forward, and the other one is Sometimes You Win and Sometimes You Learn. Think about that. Sometimes you win and sometimes you learn. It's not failure if you don't do it right and, 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 and the task doesn't happen the way it's supposed to. Guess what? There's a learn there. That's a good thing. So to, to, create a, to, to develop a sense of responsibility and subordinates, you have to give people responsibility. And Toastmasters is great at that. Employ your unit in accordance with its capabilities. You would never bring a brand new person in on their second night and make them Toastmaster, right? You just wouldn't do that. Employ, uh, uh, employ people according to their capabilities. And then last is seek responsibility and take responsibility for your actions. If you do something, and it doesn't work out if you make a decision and it's a catastrophe. You step up as a leader and you say, I made a decision with the best information that I had. It didn't work out. It was wrong. I was wrong. I have more information now. We're going to change. We're going to make a new decision and we're going to move forward. It creates respect and unity within your club, within your team. Most of you know John Maxwell, I think, if you've been around Toastmasters for a while. John Maxwell actually won the Golden Gavel at Toastmasters in 2012. And last year, he was named number one management and leadership expert in the United States by Inc. Magazine. The guy's a guru. This is my de facto definition of leadership. John Maxwell says, leadership is influence, nothing more, 
nothing less. Leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And I'm gonna come back to this, I'm gonna hit this in just a minute. The law of the lid. Has anybody ever read the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership? You have? I got a book for you. I'm, remind me, I'm gonna get you a book when we get done, all right? 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership is an amazing book. One of the laws that I think about constantly, I think about this all the time, is the law of the lid. And what the law of the lid says is that we as leaders have got a capacity to lead. Whatever it is, it is. Might be here, might be here, wherever it is, it is. And you're always gonna smack up against that law, against that lid. And you're not gonna go beyond it. Our responsibility as leaders is to raise that lid. Raise that lid. And what that allows, to, 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 what that allows in your club, as you raise your lid, you create more capacity in your club to bring other leaders be, beyond, uh, along behind you. And what is the best way to determine or to judge a leader? Does anybody know the best way to judge a leader? It's by his successor. Marty Gallagher was the president of Two Change You when I joined. Marty mentored Shari Abi. Marty took our club to a certain level, and he's an amazing leader. And then when Shari took over, she took our club even higher. And the only reason she was able to do that was because she stood on the, on, the, on, the, on the shoulders of Marty. Marty's an amazing leader. That's how you judge leaders. And, that's how, and the, the way that you have people stand on your shoulders as a leader is you have got to constantly raise your lid as a leader and bring new mentors, uh, mentor new leaders on behind you. Does anybody know what the Toastmasters International official values are? Their integrity, Respect, service, and excellence. Have we talked at all about integrity today? Have we talked about respect? Have we talked about service or servant leadership? Have we talked about anything that might be considered excellent? What about the Toastmasters International mission? I love this mission. We empower individuals to become more effective communicators and leaders. We, you and I, empower, we legitimize, we entitle, we entrust, we grant, we commission, we sanction. Who? Individuals. Each other and the newest guests in our club. To do what? To become, to develop into, to grow into, to mature, to, to be converted to. To what? More, higher, added, deeper, more effective, extended. What? Effective what? Useful, competent, active, compelled, and potent what? Communicators and leaders. We empower individuals to become more effective communicators and leaders. Now, what do most people say when they come to your club? Let me tell you what, let me tell you what Dr. Smedley said. He, he said, while most of us may have entered Toastmasters to learn to make speeches, that benefit is but the beginning of the good which may come to us and the good which we may do for mankind. What do people tell you when they, when they come to your club the first time? When you say, why did you come here tonight? Well, I came to be a better speaker. I came to feel more comfortable talking in front of people. My, my, my boss or my mentor said I should check out Toastmasters. And why do they come back? They come back because of the ethos of your club. They come back because of the esprit de corps. They come back because of your mission, vision, and values. They come back because of your leadership. That's why they come back. So is this whole thing just about learning how to speak better or be more comfortable speaking in front of people? I don't think so. I think that people say that I, I, I came to learn how to speak better. I came to learn how to be more comfortable in front of a crowd. What does that mean? I came to learn how to be a better influencer. I want to influence customers better. I want to influence the board of directors. I want to influence my peers, my boss, and whoever. It's about influence. Well, what is influence? What did John Maxwell say leadership is? Leadership is equals influence. If leadership equals influence, then influence equals leadership. When they come to you and say, I want to be a better speaker, they're saying to you, I want to be more influential. They're saying they want to be better leaders. Can you imagine? There's 300,000 of us. 
that want to be better speakers. And in the process, we're becoming better leaders. We're becoming more influential. 300,000, what does it take for us to get to a million? What kind of power is that? That's an amazing thing. That is an amazing Toastmasters system. And I am proud to be a part of it. If you, again, if you, there's, there's, uh, there's evaluations. If you liked what I had to say, Frank Gustafson is the name. If you didn't, stick somebody else's name on there. <laughs> and my wife and I live up in Melissa, Texas. And I want to give you these, these, these slides. If you will text, everybody knows how to text. If you'll text the word leadership, and the way you do that is just open up your text deal, and where it says two, put in the numbers 33444. And in the subject line, text the word leadership. Now, this is a little, this, this is a multi-step process, it's a little convoluted. The service that I've got can't actually deliver the slides. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna send you back a, another text message and ask you for your email address. When you put your email address in, it's gonna send you an email with another link. That link, you click that link and it's gonna say, give me your name and give me your email address again. Then it'll deliver the slides right to you in the PDF format and you'll have the slides. Step and, I'm sorry? Step one. Step one, yeah. Well, you know what, it works. It works. Uh, the, the service that I use is, gonna, is getting to where they're gonna be able to actually deliver the slides, but they, they can't do it right now. That's all I've got. I'm going to stick around. I'll be around here all night. And if, if anybody has any questions or want to talk about anything, I, 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 I appreciate the opportunity. Imagine some goofball kid who's doing speech number eight on Tuesday talking in front of distinguished Toastmasters. When I've got an agent and he, and, and he said, Frank, are you available on the 9th? And I said, yeah, I'm available on the 9th. And he said, I'll send you the details. And about two weeks later, he says, oh, it's a Toastmaster thing. And about 10 days ago, he said, oh, it's at the, the division con conference. I'm like, I'm just, I'm, I'm not even a CC. And I'm going to talk in front of these folks. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very much. I may steal a couple of those as I'm working on my next speech. Take go. everything you, so you want. Much. Thank you. On behalf of Toastmasters International, may I present to you a certificate of thank appreciation you. Um, as well as a goodie bag. Oh, thank of you sorts. very much. So thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you as very Frank much. I mentioned there should be evaluation sheets on your chairs. If not, I've passed you one, or if you still need one, let me know. Uh, and I know everyone's going to put Frank's name on it because he was fantastic. And we want to give him that positive feedback so that we can all continue to grow. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you.